Sehr gut! We're Will and Jen. Last week, we finally got our fifth wheel back from service. So how long has it been? Like a month? Month-ish. Then, we dealer docked at Mid-State RV in Georgia and did some recording before dropping Matt off at the airport. This week, we're heading up into the mountains of Northeast Georgia to a little Bavarian-themed town called Helen. Follow along as we try amazing German food, mm. take a roller coaster down the mountain, <laughs> and have some competitive family fun. Located in Northeast Georgia, right at the bottom of the Blue Ridge Mountains, is a little town called Helen, Georgia. It's a pretty interesting little town that we're going to be checking out this week. We're staying at this Airbnb here with my parents. It's a really cool mountain log cabin themed, and I'm really excited to give you guys a full tour. So we're going to go check it out. So real quick, before we get inside the house, you might notice we have an RV here. This is not easy. I was actually, when I planned to make this video, I was gonna recommend this to you guys as a place to maybe stay, like if you're trying to meet up with the, with other people and they don't have an RV and you were like, oh, it'd be nice to find a place to park the RV. And then the, everybody else, like we can all stay in the cabin. But this was really tough to get up. I, I did ask the host, I was like, do you think that we're gonna be able to get the RV in there? And she's like, yeah, RVs have stayed here before, but with our size rig. Don't know if I'd recommend it. Like it's doable, but it yeah. was it was wasn't fun really getting up here, and it was pretty hard to get like backed in. So just a disclaimer: if you're an RVer and you're thinking about bringing your motorhome, RVer, would probably be easier, honestly. Yeah. But the big fifth wheel travel trailer would probably be a little bit harder. I mean, we right. made it work. I I wouldn't want to do it any bigger than yeah. we are, though. See, in the pictures, the problem is, is like I just saw this driveway up here. Yeah, it looked and great. And so I'm like, oh, there's plenty of space to park it. What I didn't see was this. Yeah. This really, really steep driveway. So it was like, and this, like, just the angle of it, like, it would have been hard to back up. You, oh yeah, I so don't think we would have got it. We had to come up here, and then back up over <clears> there. <throat> so it's kind of tough. Yeah. But we did it. Right. We'll, we'll did it. It was like a. 50 point turn. <laughs> so coming up in to the front of the house, I really like how they have like the log cabin style, like wood front mixed with the stone. Right, that's I think cool. That's cute. So up here you have a nice porch area where you can come sit in the morning. Um, there's a lot more space to sit in the back too, where you have a little bit more privacy. So I think we'll be sitting back there, but it's nice that you have some space in the front as well. And also just to mention about that driveway too um if you're not in an rv you don't have to worry about it one nice thing is it is a big driveway up here yes. so if you're coming here with the group there is a lot of places to park also something so cute is i thought these were walking sticks and they might be but will was also saying they might be sticks to help push you down the river because one thing that's really popular here is tubing which we're hoping to do this week if the weather allows and I think that there's like enough rocks in the river here that you have to have a stick to like push you along. That's what our friends were telling us. And uh, so this might be two bean sticks or it might be walking sticks. Not sure. Or both. Or both, you know, double. Two for the price of one. Coming into the foyer, as you can see, the ceilings go all the way up to the second story. So it feels really big when you come in here and it has this pretty staircase um, right when you come in the front door. So I'm gonna show you the first level first and then we'll jump upstairs. Parents are hiding somewhere from the camp. <laughs> All right, so in here, as you can tell, this is a massive living room, um, really big, facing the fireplace and the TV. This is definitely like that log cabin feeling that you want when you come to the mountains, I feel like. They give you a little checkerboard here. So yeah, really, really nice. And then coming around the corner, we have the dining room area. So if you're coming here with the group, there's a nice big dining table here that can sit eight people. And then that leads right into this big kitchen, which this is definitely an upgrade from our RV kitchen. <laughs> um, but yeah, tons of countertop space, tons of prep space. You have your refrigerator here, oven, dishwasher. And then what's really nice is while you're sitting here washing dishes, which you don't really have to wash dishes because there's a dishwasher. But if you wanted to wash dishes, you have this nice kitchen sink view of the, the woods behind the house. So I love that. That's like something that I, I don't know why, but I've always wanted a house with like a window at the kitchen sink because I just think it's so nice to look out. So right behind here off the kitchen area is your laundry room. Very nice. 
Will and I have been saving up on a lot of laundry because we we're gonna do it all while we're here. And then coming over this way, this is a little half bath that you have on the first floor. So pretty basic, you know, toilet sink, cute little like design and going on in here. I like the feng shui. All right, and then right across from that hall bathroom is the first bedroom. So there are two bedrooms on the main level. One is like the master suite. So this is just your second bedroom, big windows. It is a little bit dark in here, um, but it, I think that's just the nature of like a log cabin a little bit, like the walls are a little bit darker. Something else I really like about this house is just the huge windows they have. Right. So we're off of the living room right now. And then you get this huge like front window here. You have it on the second level too. And then there's even more windows on the back. So lots of natural light coming in to help counteract like the wood walls, I think. Right. Um, so basically on the other side of the house from that first bedroom, now we're going into the master suite. Welcome into the huge master suite. So luckily Will and I get this room. I offered it to my parents, but they said since we have the dogs that we could take this suite today. Um, but nice king bed, huge room, tons of space. We actually have our own little um, back door that goes out to the deck, which we will show you in a little bit. And then what really blew my mind about this, this master suite is the bathroom. What did you say when you got here, Will? That this is like one of the biggest bathrooms right. you've ever seen. It's almost like unnecessarily it's big. It's like almost overkill, but like coming from our small RV bathroom, it's kind of nice. So we have double vanity here. Nice, these are really, like I love the like style going on with like the rough wood and the, and the right. countertops. And then big jetted bathtub, which I might use at some point this week. And then over here, nice big shower. And then last thing in the bathroom is just your closet for the room. So that's a nice size closet. You yeah. Know, a Christmas tree in there. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I wonder if they put that up at Christmas time for their yeah, guests. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, this is a really, really nice bathroom. And I kind of feel bad that my parents have to go upstairs, but I'm also kind of glad that we get this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to the upstairs. All right, coming up to the second floor, we have a nice loft up here with a billiards table. So we'll probably come up here and play a few rounds of pool at some point. They also give you just some chairs to kind of hang out up here on a little table. So I really like this like, this like kind of living space that you get on the second story. And then we have two bedrooms up here. All right, so the first bedroom up here has two queen beds. All right, no, really this room could even sleep four adults comfortably yeah. if you wanted. But I see this as the room for like the, where the kids could kind of sleep. Yeah. And then right next door is the full bathroom that's upstairs. So pretty similar to the hall bathroom downstairs, except for that you do get a shower. And then here is your last bedroom. So this is the second bedroom upstairs. I believe this is a king bed too, it looks like it. And again, you get nice views of the kind of like the side of the house. That's where our RV is right out there. Um, so that wraps up the inside of the house. And now I think what's really stands out about this house is some of the outside features. So we're gonna head outside and show you what that looks like. All right, so right off of the kitchen, we have a nice screen in porch which I'm already happy about because as soon as we got up here and we were trying to park the RV, I noticed that there are a lot of like mosquitoes. Are they mosquitoes? Yeah, some sort of bug, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think they're mosquitoes, which I, is it's actually more common in the mountains than I ever realized. Yeah. Like every time we go up in the mountains, I notice there's tons of mosquitoes. So I love how there's like an area where we can sit out here and not have to worry about them. Um, they give you a nice big sectional couch, so plenty of seating. And then right behind where Will is right now is the door to go out to the rest of the deck. So quite honestly, this area out here is the big reason why we booked this house, just because there is so much room to like hang out and relax. So up on this first level, we have a grill and we already have planned to use that. We've got a couple of grilling meals planned. And then down here, we have a really, really nice outside fireplace right across from a hot tub. So, I mean, this can't really get any better, like being in the mountains in a log cabin, having a hot tub, except for the fact that there is one more really, really cool thing about this house. Right up here across from the hot tub, we have our very own outdoor sauna. So this is like a little two to three person sauna, which is perfect for us. And I definitely think I'm gonna use it, even though it is April, so it's not super cold out, but I just can't imagine like if you came up here in the winter when there's snow out on the ground, how nice it would be to come outside, get in the sauna and then maybe get in the hot tub. This is definitely like your relaxing like escape during the winter. So I'm just so excited to use this sauna at some point and I think we're really, really gonna enjoy being here. 
All right, so that wraps up the full tour of this beautiful mountain Airbnb. If you guys are interested in staying here, if you're planning a trip to the Helen area, I'll make sure to put the link to this Airbnb down in the description below. Um, the host that we dealt with was super, super friendly. Um, they are also pet friendly, so if you have dogs with you, um, you can bring them. There is a pet fee, um, but you can bring them. So we um, are going to settle in. This is our first night here and enjoy this house. And tomorrow we have some fun activities planned in Helen. So today we are in downtown Helen, which is themed after a German Bavarian Alpine village. So as you can see behind me, all of the buildings are very German themed. Feels like I just popped into Germany in the middle of the US. And actually, if you guys have been watching us for a while, you may have seen our video when we were in Michigan, we went to Frankenmuth, which is also a German themed town, kind of in the middle of nowhere. But today we are here downtown and we're just gonna be walking around exploring the town of Helen. So our first stop today in Helen is lunch at Hofbra House, which is a traditional German style restaurant. So we're really excited to try some real German food, which I've really never done before. We got a little bit of a late start to the day because my mom and I had a pretty um, intense checkers tournament this morning <laughs> <laughs> and it ended up stretching way longer. So by the time we got here, it's like one o'clock. All right, up first is a giant pretzel with beer cheese. Let's give it a taste. That's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks all nice and buttery. Oh, it is. And the it cheese looks very good too. Edible. All right, you give it a taste, Dad. It looks very <laughs> edible. <laughs> That's what it's looks. not plastic. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Delicious. Delicious. Yeah, so they definitely like brush it with butter and then just a little have like parsley. There's like the perfect amount of salt and parsley yeah. I guess, on it. It's final verdict. The pretzel's really soft. <laughs> <laughs> the pretzel has a great flavor and it's really, really soft. And the cheese dip too. Yeah. It has a lot of flavor. It's like a thicker cheese dip. It's just overall, it's honestly one of the best like soft pretzels I've ever had. Yeah. All right, so since we're at a German restaurant, we definitely wanted to get some authentic German food. So Will and I both got the chicken schnitzel, which I didn't even know what a schnitzel was before I got here, but it's basically just a piece of, they do chicken or pork. Um, they might do beef, I don't know, but they, they pound it flat and then they bread it and pan fry it. And then I also got as my sides a potato pancake, which, you know, you were saying mom is with mashed potatoes, but this looks like more like hash browns. So it's like hash browns and you mix it with like egg and flour and then form it into a pancake and they give you applesauce and sour cream to dip it in and then i also got a side of roasted carrots so we'll got the exact same thing and then tell us what you got mom i got a bratwurst with sauerkraut and i got german potato salad but i was supposed to get a um, potato, pancake. potato pancake which is no big deal and now you get to try both yeah all right dad what'd you get okay i've got uh, german um potato salad uh-huh and what is this called again? It's chicken. Is it? Oh, you got the chicken schnitzel sandwich. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So you got essentially what we got, but just on a sandwich. Yeah, you that's guys right. are real creative. <laughs> yeah. oh, I got the I'm only schnitzel. a different one. That's okay. And then we also got some German beer to try, right? That's right. Especially. And all I know is mine looks very good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. First try of the chicken schnitzel. Okay. It's really good flavor-wise, like he said. He told us, he warned us it is a little dry. So I think, he, didn't he say to use some of that gravy or whatever? So that'd probably be good. Yeah. But I mean, the flavor is really, really good. Yeah. How's that bratwurst? Good. Good. The best bratwurst you've ever had? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it definitely feels it's authentic. Definitely. Oh, authentic, yeah. All right, Dad, how's yours? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Best German potato salad I've ever had. 
<laughs> Have you ever had any other German potato salad? <laughs> Never. <laughs> All right. Oh. They give you a lemon. Oh, oh. cheap. I really like that. Yeah. Did you put lemon good. juice on that? I did not it actually. It just gives it a little like extra freshness. Mm -hmm. But it's really good. Like you can you can see like the crispy mm. edges on yeah, it. Like show. Yeah, get real close ASMR stuff. <laughs> it's got the nice crispy edges and actually mine's not that dry i don't okay. even feel like i necessarily need gravy like you could do gravy for the flavor but i don't think you need it so i guess it's common for potato pancakes to either dip it in applesauce or sour cream or both are you supposed to do both at the same time i feel like it's one or the other type of thing but well, i'm gonna try, try i'm gonna try the um i'm sure the sour cream is good i mean that's like a baked potato almost. yeah but I'm gonna try the applesauce because that's kind of a little bit more unique. Good. It's like really interesting, like potato with applesauce. Yeah. But it's actually kind of good because the applesauce is really sweet and the pancake is a little salty, so they balance each other. All right, one last thing we had to try here is true German beer. So this is called the Erdinger. And he said it's very similar to like a Blue Moon, but without the cardamom. Which I'm not a big beer person anyway, so I'm like, sure. But he said it's like pretty light and natural, so. I mean, it's beer. <laughs> if that's the problem is I'm not a beer person, so I'm just like, well, it tastes like beer. I will say it's not that like real gross beer taste. It's like a lighter beer taste, so. A lighter gross beer taste. A lighter gross beer taste. <laughs> <laughs> if you like beer, you'll probably like this. Or Steiner. Or Steiner. <laughs> or Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the only German word. Right. right. <laughs> just keep so. saying, I feel like all day I'm just going to have all these things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Actually, it's good. Right, for a beer, that's what I'm saying. Because usually beer is like, ugh. But it's like a light. I mean, I taste. could drink this, and I'm not a big beer person, but I right. could drink this. Yeah, it's not bad. So we just wrapped up at lunch, and um, it was such good food. It was actually like really fun because we were talking about how much we want to visit Germany now. And to be honest, I never would have thought that I would have liked German food, but it was very, very good. The other really cool thing is that it's right on the Chattahoochee River. So it was just really nice being like a nice little riverside lunch for today. So first we are at Hansel and Gretel's Candy Kitchen. We saw the guy making caramel from the window and so we decided to come in and see what they had here. Let's do one of the key lines. We'll do one of the caramel, you want dark? And we'll do two of the pure milk, toasted coconut with dark chocolate. That's you get. So we, they have a special there where you can get 12 truffles for like $14, which ended up definitely being more of a cost savings. That's the only reason, right? Look at these guys. Looks great. I know. Take one of those milk chocolates. You want to try milk chocolate? Oh, wait till so we, we, they had like so many different flavors. So we decided to try to get a variety and try a lot of different things. So which one should I? I'm not even gonna remember like the different flavors. What? What you got? What you want? What you want to try? <laughs> That's key lime. Oh. That's orange. Let's do. You try the orange. Okay. I'll leave that one up, and I'll do the key lime. So this one is dark chocolate orange, key lime with white chocolate. With white chocolate. It's funny because when you first bite in, you're like, I don't taste any orange. <laughs> And then you like give it a second and then you it's start tasting subtle. it. It's like, yeah, it's subtle. It's nice because it's not like a strong orange flavor. It reminds That's me of good. those little, like, you know, the little candies you can get around Christmas where it almost looks like an orange and it's yeah, pieces that. of chocolate. Oh yeah. It's like that. Okay, cool. Chocolate orange. You want to try one more? Sure. So you got a milk chocolate? Yep. Tastes like milk chocolate. <laughs> it is very good. So we'll save the rest and have them throughout the week. Yes. I'm not sure to eat them all right now. No. <laughs> and we got a caramel apple. Oh yeah, you guys got a caramel apple, right? Yes, we did. When are you gonna have that tonight? Later, we'll cut it off. I know we were just gonna walk past there, and then I saw the guy making caramel, and then we just had to go. We in. just had to go try it. But... All right, on to the next stop. Helen sits right along the Chattahoochee River in Georgia and one of the most popular things to do in Helen actually is to go tubing down the river. Unfortunately we're here in like mid-April and they haven't actually opened up the tubing yet. It looks like it starts around late May so if you are planning a trip here and that's like top of your list want to make sure you come more and probably like from late spring to early fall. Um, so I'm really sad because I was hoping we'd go tubing and then when I looked it up I realized it wasn't open yet. 
Um, but yeah, it would be really, really fun. And the nice thing is, from what I see this river, it's like just rough enough that it would be fun tubing because it's like there's rocks and all kinds of things that you can go around. So if we ever come back here, we'll definitely have to come in summer and do the tubing. Up next, we are at Georgia Mountain Coaster, and we're about to jump on like our own little roller coaster. It's individual, and we're gonna kind of ride through the mountain. It should be really cool, really scenic, so we're excited. Have you guys ever done a mountain coaster before? Oh yes, I do one at least once a year. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? I I've done one before. I've done one before. Where'd you do it? Oh, West. we did it together, did we do it together? Yeah. yeah. I Yeah. I do one once in a lifetime. <laughs> well, here this you go. Is it. This, this is, is it. it. What order are we going in? Um, well, I don't want to be like rammed like that guy did in that YouTube video <laughs> I showed you. <laughs> All right, y'all got four? Yep. Anybody riding together? No. All separate? All yep. right, first one, you got to hop on 14 right there. Thank you. Oh. Bye. Bye. We are heading up the mountain now. So it's all automatic going up the mountain. It's just pulling you on a track. So I don't need my hands for this. But then once we get to the top, you have control of how fast or slow you go. You essentially can apply the brakes as much as you want. And Will's right up there. And Mom is probably back there. I can't see her, but I'm sure she's there somewhere. The cool thing about these mountain coasters is they build it like through the trees usually like this. So once we're coming down, you're just like winding through the trees. There goes Will. All right, it's almost time to push the brakes forward. About to be going downhill. Here we go. There's Dad! Hi Dad! Good luck! <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Man, that goes fast! Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Woo! Oh man, that was short! That was so much fun. That really was. It was shorter than I expected, I though. Know. Didn't the west one feel longer? Yeah. Did you break it all? I hardly broke. I know, me too. I mean, around like the big turns, I would. Yeah. It's such a weird feeling because you feel like you're on a roller coaster, but then you're in like control right. of how fast it goes. So it's so funny because you kind of like second guess, like, right. Oh, like, should I just full throttle it? Like, I think they were breaking a lot. <laughs> oh, my parents. Yeah. Here she comes. What'd you think? It was fun. It was fun. I mean, you were further behind me than I was behind Will. We were like full throttling it the whole time. <laughs> Here it comes. Keep going for it. What'd you think, Dad? <laughs> that was a whiz, I'll tell did you. you. Did you full throttle it the whole time? I uh, No, I did not. No. <laughs> Will and I were almost full throttle the whole time. Were you really? Yeah. Oh my God. But there's a couple times where I did slow down because you'd be full throttle. You go around a turn you feel like your whole cart shift in the track. I know. And you're like, yeah, maybe I'll slow down a little bit. I know. So I believe it was about like $16 per adult. So it was like 64 for the four of us to do that. But the cool thing is, is your second ride is half off. So Will and I ended up doing a second ride and it only cost $16 for the two of us. So if you're coming and you're already doing it once, you might as well do it a second time um, for the price of it because it's actually like kind of a shorter ride than I expected. So it goes by really fast. So I would definitely do it two times. So unlike Frankenmuth in Michigan, which was actually settled by Germans, Helen is actually literally just a tourist attraction. It was an old logging town, but economically it was really struggling and starting to go downhill. So they decided to make it kind of like a Swiss Alps type feel, uh, German themed, and uh, just to really turn it into a tourist attraction. And that's how it came to be what it is today. All 
All right, now we are over at Bavarian Mountain uh, Miniature Golf. This is actually kind of an intense looking putt-putt. They have two 18-hole courses here that you could pick from. One is more challenging than the other, and so of course we picked the challenging one. I picked the challenging one because whoever wins will be the true winner. <laughs> okay, so we're doing oldest to youngest, right? Yep. All That's right, hot. I go last. Oldest to youngest? You go first. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so on this next one, we gotta go underneath this little rock bridge. I'm not, I'm going around it. You're going around? Is that your strategy? Yep. What's your strategy, Will? I'm going around it too. Oh, really? Yeah. I just want to go under it for the fun of it, though. <laughs> Do it and you <laughs> lose. <laughs> Do it and lose. How many is here? That's what three. Dad did, right? You went under it? Uh, that's two, this is three. See, I'm going under. That's my strategy. Frick, I think. Was it close? Pretty close, yeah. Oh, <laughs> someone has anger management issues. Oh man, that, I mean that's embarrassing. That that's even that's even more embarrassing. There we go. I was in counting. Thirteen. It was more like six. All right, well, you're going with the roundabout strategy, right? Yeah. What? Outside the fence. <laughs> Not, how did you even manage to do that? <laughs> he hit it so hard. He hit it so hard it went outside the fence. <laughs> See, he hits golf balls like he does the um, pool. pool balls. You gotta be stupid standing Like, look how he like does the wind-ups, like, Jesus. Oh, oh that fine. was close. We're halfway done. I think that I'm first. No. <laughs> That's funny. We're halfway done. I think that mom is first, dad is second, I'm third, and Will's fourth. That's what I think. The only thing everybody got right was that I'm last. <laughs> <laughs> Jen actually made it to first. Woo! Wow. Did you pay him to cheat for you? <laughs> Then Diane, then Paul, then me. Wow! I was oh, so oh is it between you and I between again? Between you and I. So okay. we didn't document our. How was the score difference? Right. Because I need to know how much I need to make up. Two points. Oh, that's. Oh, easy. that's easy to cream me with. Mean, <laughs> you were how far ahead of me with checkers this morning? Yeah, we didn't document, but we played probably what an hour-long oh, checkers it game. It was longer than that. Oh. I've never played such a long checkers game. I don't think ever. So it sounds fairly confident. This is the one where she said it's better to hit it in the water because then you come down and you go over that grate and it's like lined up good to the hole. Are you gonna go down the river? Yeah. Just, but you have to, you have to say you're going to too, regardless. Yeah, I'll call the river. You better. <laughs> All right, Ma. There you go. <laughs> see, see, see. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. See, I told you. That was close too. Was close. Almost a hole in one. All right, so what are we tied? We're either tied or I'm ahead by one. So I gotta oh, get a I hole in. No, you're not ahead by one. Uh, is she? I think so. All right, well I'm about to go, and I gotta get a hole in one on this middle one. Oh. How do you feel? You. I feel ashamed. You Maybe should. On the Come on, Jen, you gotta get this. Got, you got a lot of room to make up now. Three. Hold number 18. Gotta go between these two rocks. Oh, it was a good hit, Dad. All right, Will. Let's see what you could do on the last one. New high score, highest number of hits. <laughs> well, it's too strong for his own good. <laughs> Three, not bad.
Yay! What do you think, Jen? <laughs> I think, but I still want in spirit. <laughs> All right, Should let's I start see. with first place or last place? Last place. Any guesses? Well. <laughs> <laughs> in fourth place, with a total of 89 swings. Swings? Hits. Hits, yeah. Was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have never guessed that. So that such a surprise. In third place, any guesses? Paul. Any other guesses? Jen. Me. <laughs> In third place was 77 hits. Don't say it. Was Paul. Yes. <laughs> In second place, any guesses? Me. <laughs> you say it with such enthusiasm. With 74 hits, you weren't far behind. Was Jen. Oh, that's like the second loser, or the first loser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the second loser, the first loser. And in first place, by landslide, with only 63 hits, was Diane. <gasps> Not bad, huh? <laughs> Me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying about that? Me? You know what I'm I just can't that? believe that. <laughs> that good. <laughs> what was that? What I say about that is, <laughs> Hello, people of the internet. Okay, I'm I'm filming. All right, my arms are getting tired. No, don't play your games with me. Look. <laughs> Okay, guess what? It was a bug. Oh, this is a little lady tidy. Yeah, for you! I had to get this off by myself earlier. And I was out here begging for help, calling for help, but no one came to save me. Hoffman. Hoffman. How do you say it? Hoffman House. Did you get it? Dad's like looking right at the camera. Uh, Don't look at the camera. Act natural. Is that good? <laughs> do you see his face? <laughs> he can't just act normal. <laughs> It's not comedy hour, Paul. Bad man. Oh, careful, you're okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> now that we know you're okay. <laughs> man, you couldn't go on a hike. You can't even. Doing? You can almost switch your ankle on a mini golf course. <laughs> you gotta get you, Jen. I said, if you get a hole in one, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> 